Okay, Doc. So this one's a much shorter one. I was wondering if testosterone or HG can cure social anxiety depression, but mostly social anxiety. I'm not sure if you mean HGH or HCG, but certainly testosterone has been known um, as an antidepressant since at least the 1960s. I've been looking for the article I read from the 1950s, but I know just from memory that we treated females and I say that because most people say, oh, well, you know, testosterone is a male drug only, certainly way back then. But we were treating females with depression with testosterone way back when in the 1950s. It is a natural antidepressant. And I see it day in and day out where, and I know we've done a video on this about depression and, and you know, antidepressants and, you know, 35 to 45 people come in about that same time when hormones are going the wrong way and they get on antidepressants because doctor goes, depression? Oh, antidepressant. Well, let's use an SSRI. Well, by definition, depression occurs unless you get a bonk on the head to change your chemistry. Late teens, early 20s, period. That's the Bible, DSM, soon to be DSM-5. That We know that. So I'm just telling you what we know as physiology. So, yeah, if your testosterone has dropped off, this person hasn't suggested if they're male or female, if they're hypogonadal or not, but if you're hypogonadal, for sure, that could be a source of depression and anxiety. Remember, sense of well-being, that sense that, you know, you wake up at 2 in the morning, you know, sleep is, is an issue for a lot of people, yeah. and it comes in sort of as, a, as an ancillary topic, but, you know, they mention, yeah, and I'm not really sleeping well either. Well, why? You wake up at 2 in the morning after your first, you know, four-hour sleep cycle, assuming you went to bed at, you know, 10, and then you have enough energy to start ruminating again. The 2.3 kids and a mortgage, and you go, oh, my God, and you can't go back to sleep. Right. When you were 18, you were like, whatever it was. I know you didn't have 2.3 kids in a mortgage back then, but you didn't get the right date for the prom or whatever, which I know it seems silly, but to you back then, it meant yeah. a lot. So relatively speaking, say, shut up, brain. There'll be another girl I'll meet down the road, you know? And you go back to sleep. Without the testosterone, you don't have that sense of, of well-being to say, you know what, whatever, I'll handle it in the morning when I get up. And so anxiety can be furthered by a lack of appropriate amounts of testosterone, anxiety and depression are definitely linked. The way I look at it, you know, there, there's two kinds of depression. You have the flow where everyone talks about. When you're in the flow, when things are going well, you're not depressed. You can have a blockage in the flow if you have too much energy for the pipe diameter, if you will. What happens if you try and, you know, put a pipe this big into a pipe this big all at once? You got a bottleneck, literally, you know, in some cases, right? So whatever passes that smaller, that bottleneck is limited in flow. And that creates depression, okay? And that's made from anxiety and getting one furthers the other. It's too much energy, in other words. Then you can have the opposite type, where you just have no flow going down a pipe this big. You've got, you know, about that much water at the bottom of the pipe, you know? And that also creates a different kind of depression. Most of what we see in modern day, because we're healthy, we've got a lot of stuff going on, it's not like you have a deficiency in B vitamins, or you're not getting enough nutrition. The depression is from just being wound up in the 21st century and at, at bottlenecking. So, you know, you get that anxiety level down, you go, hey, it's okay, I'm feeling good, and I can get rid of some of that extra energy by going to the gym and all the stuff we know is good for us, and I'm not gonna bat, grab a bite of the wrong food to make myself feel even worse. The anxiety comes down, and along with that, the depression goes away. As well as, again, just plain and simple, testosterone is a natural antidepressant. If you are naturally, your whole life, wound up, type A, then I will draw an exception and say, hey, remember, testosterone doesn't turn you in to Mr. Hyde from Dr. Jekyll, okay? It will turn you in, it will give you more energy to be whoever you are. Right. So if you're naturally, you know, wound up, and I'm not making fun, I'm just saying, then yeah, giving yourself more energy to be wound up might be a mistake. But in this case, you can simply say, well, like I do in practice, well, when you were, assuming this person's 50, when you were 25, were you anxious all the time? No, life was great. I never worried about a thing. Okay, this implicates maybe low testosterone. And again, as you said earlier, test. Right. I mean, at least start there right. and see if it jives with your symptoms. There you go. Good question. You got an easy one, Doc? Well, it's a short one. Short <laughs> it's one. a little easier this right. way, right? Uh, 
I'm an old ask the doc. Oh, in an old ask the doc, Dr. Rand mentioned that certain neurotransmitters can sometimes help with one's sense of well-being. Absolutely. Can you ask him to talk a little bit about options he might use there? Assuming test levels are already solid, but one's mood and sense of well-being aren't where they'd like them to be. Well, first let me state I'm not a trained psychiatrist or a psychologist or anything like that. I just... I've, I've been a few rounds with a psychopharmacologist friend of mine who I thought was awesome. He was an MD and an engineer. And so watching him work was phenomenal because uh, I'd see the results and I'd actually go back to, you know, this was in medical school. And, you know, they'd say, oh, well, you know, a minimum dose of uh, you pick the SSRI is X amount. And this guy would be using one tenth. He would be razor blading these tablets to these patients. They try this first and working there up because he knows like we all should know one size does not fit all, you know? Um, so anyway, uh, again, I, I disclaim, I'm not an expert in this, but I do know a lot about what we know so far about neurotransmitters. One of the things that can affect your sense of well being, uh, the first thing, you know, there, there are basically three, I would say, okay. GABA, um, choline, acetylcholine, and dopamine, okay? Um, well, I'd say four, excuse me, beg your pardon. Uh, I forgot serotonin, one of the big ones, okay? Four neurotransmitters. Serotonin tends to give you that feeling that you had when you're 16 and you smelled, and pardon me if you're you know, Muslim and you don't eat, or, or Jewish and you don't eat bacon or whatever, but you know, the smell of bacon in the morning on a Sunday, and you know, hey, the world is great and everything's chill and I'm about to get a good meal and you know, <laughs> got a good night's sleep. You know, that's what serotonin does. It's, it sort of just makes you chill. Not like GABA, which does something similar when you talk about chill, uh, in the sense that, you know, GABA is what is uh, the, the receptor that's effectuated by, you know, alcohol, gabapentin, a receptor that's like it, which benzodiazepines, Valium tend to activate. That's more of like a, hey, kind of knock you out sort of chill as opposed to, ah, you know, I mean, it's just kind of chill. Are, are, does that make sense yes. to you? So, okay, yes. hopefully it'll make sense to the listeners. Uh, and then you have uh, acetylcholine, which is more responsible for your brain firing, executive function, you know, okay, uh, calculating, you know, uh, the square root of 565 or something like that. And then you have dopamine which tends to give you energy, but it's also that feel-good hormones for why a lot of people will snort cocaine and get addicted to it because they're short in dopamine. It's the only thing that makes them feel better like you're supposed to. Uh, you know, sex can make you feel better. It's that dopamine release sometimes that you get that, you know, wow, okay. Remember that dopamine can get uh, uh, converted into noradrenaline, epinephrine, you know, it, things that, that also give you energy. So... My f and I'm explaining all these typically, so, th so this person can say, well, oh, that one's me, not that one. But typically, if you're saying, I don't have a sense of well-being, I would look to either the serotonin first, which doesn't mean I'm right at all. I mean, it could be, I could be dead off, uh, or a dopamine enhancer. If it's a lack of well-being because of just kind of depressed, don't have much energy, maybe throw something in there that, that bounces up your dopamine. Anything... Um, you know, uh, you've got, uh, you know, a cascade of hormones, phenylalanine and tyrosine, uh, that can, they're all related to, you know, that, in that, I told you conversion, you know, uh, dopamine, adrenaline eventually. Uh, so that you might try and just phenylalanine, um, DL phenylalanine actually helps with pain control. You know, if there's any chronic pain, making them feel out, meaning, you know, the, the, the racemic mixture of, of, uh, uh, I don't want to get too technical, but not just L-phenylalanine, but dextrorotary, D-L-phenylalanine. And there's some studies. Guys can look it up on the internet. I won't waste time on our video here. But uh, that would be a way to go. Um, and you can. they're all non-pharmaceutical. You don't need a doctor to go out there. So what raises um, uh, serotonin levels without an SSRI? 5-HTP. Take a couple hundred, 300 milligrams at night right before you go to bed. See if that's, and you can take it during the day too. See if that doesn't help with a sense of well being. If that doesn't work, scrap that one. Maybe you need a GABA enhancer. There's so many GABA enhancers out there. Taking GABA itself, probably not the best idea because the half life is so short. But things that can mellow, mellow you out uh, uh, um, uh, in there are uh, 
Actually, it might be better to go the RX route, but non-controlled substances route. You don't have to try benzodiazepine, you know, Xanax, Valium, or whatever, but gabapentin is one that's fairly, uh, you know, I shouldn't say it this way because it all depends. But on a relative scale, it's less uh, addictive and therefore possibly harmful than, say, a benzodiazepine. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's l taurine for example, you can oh, yeah. take, which tends to chill you out in big dose. You know, four to six grams, three or four times a day. Uh, that you can try. That doesn't work. Again, uh, L-tyrosine, the phenylalanines, precursors to dopamine. And then what was the other one I didn't address? Uh, oh, and acetylcholine. That typically isn't one that people complain about when they're talking about not feeling up to snuff. That's usually they're saying, hey, I feel dumb. <laughs> you know, I feel like I'm a step behind when I'm talking to people because that's more for executive function. So when, you know, that, that would be the last thing I would try if you're saying you're not really feeling uh, in a good mood or whatever. Okay. Great. Thank you, Doc.